Many designers focus on the primary traditional grid systems of column and modular grids. However, there are several other options that can be explored for creating hierarchy through a grid structure. In this video, I want to talk about axial, radial, and dimensional grid structures as well. Let's start off with an axial grid structure. The axial system is one of the simplest systems. All the elements are organized on either the left or the right side of a single line or axis. This is a branching arrangement for the implied main line. The axis can exist anywhere in any format and create a good symmetric or asymmetric composition. Experience working with axial systems reveals that asymmetric arrangements is often more interesting than, than the symmetrical ones. When the axis is placed off-center to the left or the right, the space is divided in a more interesting way. There's a shift in the proportion of larger and smaller volumes of space. The use of asymmetry results in relatively simple visual arrangements that have a heightened visual interest. In this example by Emil Rudner, a single axis poster uses a strong vertical stress on the number one. The emphasis on the vertical movement is increased because the stroke bleeds off the top of the poster and is connected to the H. The proportions on the poster are divided vertically by the one and the column of the names, giving it a pleasing one-third to two-third ratio. Here's another great example that uses a two-color poster design, and it's simple with a single axis that makes the work very memorable. Although the text is limited to two sizes, the three words dropped out in white create a clear hierarchy. The poster benefits from asymmetry as the axis is placed on the two-thirds distance from the left edge. This gives it a pleasing change in proportion to the one-third, two-thirds. The diagonal type arranged on a vertical axis makes the work even more dramatic. When working with an axial system, try to vary the type of line that you're working with. It doesn't always have to be a straight vertical or horizontal line. Your line can imply a certain shape or a certain type of movement. It can even be diagonal and run across the page. As long as all of the elements align to that central strong axis, then you're creating a good axial grid system. A second type of grid system is a radial grid system. In the radial system, all the elements are organized to extend from a central point of focus like rays. The compositions are dynamic as the eye is drawn to the focal point of the radial composition. This point can be implied or even explicitly depicted. Depending on the orientation of the lines, readability of the message may be diminished as the type leaves the traditional horizontal baseline. Within this system, lines of text can be arranged to be read in a number of different ways. You can go top to bottom, bottom to top, right side up, upside down. In order to create a functional message, the lines of text should be arranged in the most comfortable manner possible. You can see in this example, called the Old Truman Brewery Poster by Paul Humphrey, they're using a radial system. The text is arranged around a central focal point. It has a strong horizontal line. There's sharp angles of text that slice through the collage of images in a dynamic pinwheel fashion. In this example, Bring Into Noise and Bring Into Funk is a musical that celebrates characters through tap dancing and music. The sole of the tap shoe is the focal point for the type that radiates from it. The result is an informational composition made all the more spontaneous by the irregularities and the changes from handwritten type. The text is separated by hand-drawn lines and radial aspects are intensified by the size changes from the words noise and funk. To enhance a radial grid system, think about its hierarchy and how you can emphasize certain things over another so that you get a good entry point. 
Know that a radial system has to have one central focal point to start on and all the information radiates from there. You can group things together. You can change up the color or the weight of different information. You can follow other rules of typography and hierarchy by emphasizing the different sizes of things. And they don't always have to be directly linear. You can have things spiral outwards or you can have things move in different kinds of swooping patterns. A final kind of grid to consider would be a dimensional grid. These are, in my opinion, the most fun but rarely used types of grids that you can apply towards your typography. Dimensional grids add a third dimension to your otherwise flat design, and this can be applied to either text or images. Readability for a dimensional text is very important, so you typically would do this for something like a headline or any main large attention-getting styles of text. As with the radial system, you would want all of your text to go to a central point. In this case, it would be a vanishing point. So try to find a vanishing point that either matches a photograph or keep it consistent with all of the text that you have. In this example, you can see that the vanishing point doesn't necessarily have to be directly indicated, but it still gives the text the appearance or the feel that it's moving in a third dimension or has its own plane that's separate from the piece that it's printed on. Creating these three different kinds of structures can be tricky depending on the software that you're working on. So let me show you how I would approach these working in InDesign, Illustrator, and Photoshop. Let's start off with InDesign. If you wanted to create an axial grid in InDesign or even Photoshop or Illustrator, at any time you can turn on your rulers to see them at the top and the left hand side, then click on the ruler itself and either drag down or across to create a vertical or horizontal ruler or guide. Now this is great for creating vertical and horizontal, but if you wanted to create a diagonal or any other shaped axial type system, this is where you want to go into your layers and create a new layer for those type of guides. So in my layers panel, I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call it my guides layer. And I'll create that layer and drag it to the bottom of my, my page. From here, I can use any of my drawing tools to draw off the type of guides that I want. For instance, if I wanted a diagonal line, I can choose my line tool and draw it diagonally. And then of course I can change the color of it and even the weight of it so that it's not as thick as the others. So that matches, in other words, my rest of my guides. This would work for any kind of guide that you want to create. Now unfortunately, it's difficult to create simple radial guides or even dimensional guides in InDesign. This is where I would actually go into Photoshop or Illustrator to create those kinds of guides as well. Let's jump into Photoshop first. Within Photoshop, just like in InDesign, you can always click and drag on your rulers to create horizontal or vertical guides. If you want to create any other kind of shape, this is where you need to choose your shape tools. In this case, I'll choose my line segment tool. Go up to the options at the top. Do make sure you've got shape selected change your stroke color and also stroke weight, and then click on your stroke profile and make sure that it's aligning to the outside edge. With this done, we'll set this back to be one pixel, you can click and drag and draw off whatever line shapes that you want from here. With that done, you can go to your layers, you can lock them down or even drop their opacity to get those guidelines out of your way so that you can place your own text or images on top of those as well. Creating dimensional text and images is the funnest thing to do in Photoshop. I'm going to go to my layers and let's get rid of these guidelines by just unlocking them and deleting them away. If I wanted to create three-dimensional text, I'm going to choose my type tool and simply type out whatever dummy text that I want. So let's do T-E-X-T. -E let's do it in all caps. With the text layer established, go to your Layers panel, open the Options, 
and then convert that text layer to a smart object. Now that it's a smart object, you can go up to Edit, down to Transform, and either choose your Distort or Perspective transformation tools. I prefer the Distort tool because this allows me to click on any of the corners and put my text directly into the vanishing point that it needs. Once I commit to that transformation, you can see now my text is nice and in three dimensions. And so it's just that easy to do that for any kind of text or image that you're working on. Now in my opinion, working in Illustrator gives you the most flexibility of these three kinds of grids. Within Illustrator, you can always use your line segment tool to draw off a line in any kind of diagonal fashion that you want, or you can use your pen tool to draw off any kind of linear shape that you want. With those lines established and as an axis, you can always go up to View, down to Guides, and tell it to Make Guides. This will turn those, guides in, those lines into guidelines that you can place your text around. As with the Photoshop and Illustrator, or excuse me, InDesign, you can also click on the ruler and click and drag to create horizontal and vertical rulers all over the place. Let's go to View and Guide. I'm going to clear these away. If you wanted to create radial guides, there's a couple of different options you can use as well. First off, you've got a polar grid tool that will allow you to click and drag and create perfect little divisions of circles. If you increase or decrease your arrow keys as you click and drag, you can get rid of the circles or increase it. Or if you use the left and right arrow keys, you can increase and decrease the amount of radians that you're working on. So that gives you a perfect type circle. If you wanted more of a spiral effect, you can choose the spiral tool and that will give you this kind of guideline. Or as always, you can use your line segment tool to draw off the guides in a more free form type fashion. Once you've drawn off your guides, as always, select them, go up to View and Guides, and tell it to make those into guides that you can place your text on top of. The final thing you can do in Adobe Illustrator is put text or any type of other image into a three-dimensional look and feel. To do this with text, go ahead and type out some dummy text. I'll make it larger so I can see it. The first thing we need to do is to convert this to outlines. So go up to Type and choose Create Outlines. Then from here, you can choose your different kinds of distortion tools with your free, free transform tool and choose the bottom most one which will give you free distort. This will allow you to click on the edges of your text and automatically place it into a vanishing point that you need. With it done, now you can set and use your text however you wish.